Inside Texas Politics, I'm Jason Whiteley. Tomorrow, the Electoral College meets at state houses across the country to formally elect Donald Trump as the next president of the United States. His administration is already coming together as well. Now, attention is turning to which campaign promises actually become priorities. Republican Congressman Michael Burgess from Denton County is back with us this morning to talk about what he would like to see. And joining the questioning, as always, Buck Kennedy of the Star-Telegram. Good to have both of you here. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. Let's start with the Affordable Care Act. What happens to it? Does it get repealed? What's in with the Affordable Care Act? What, what, <laughs> what, what happens to it? Does it get repealed, defunded? What do you foresee? Well, there will be a two, my understanding is there will be a two-stage process. Uh, the Senate actually will pass a budget resolution very quickly after we get back in in early January. There will be reconciliation instructions, which will go back to the committees that are basically the repeal of the Affordable Care Act. The individual mandate, employer mandate, Cadillac tax, device tax, these are things last year that were passed in a, in a reconciliation package. I imagine this reconciliation law will look similar to what passed last year. Last year, of course, President Obama vetoed it. This year, uh, after January 20th, you have a president who will sign it. So that will be the first step, and that will also set the stage for the transition. What is the off-ramp from where we are currently right. in the Affordable Care Act? What does it look like going forward? And is that a two-year or three-year time frame? I'd vote for two years, but realistically, those discussions are going to occur. A lot of people will weigh in, both both providers, patients, insurance companies. There is going to be a well, lot of discussion. And that's what I want to ask about, Congressman. What happens to the 16 million that are insured by the ACA? Well, let's break that down a little bit. There are people who are covered under subsidies because of the in the marketplace plans. Again, there will be a transition to whatever is next. The majority of those. Is, is there a replacement, though? No, well, there absolutely well, is. Well, what is a replacement? But look, let's break, but let's let's concentrate on what you first asked because okay. it is important. Yeah. And then the other portion of probably the larger number of those people who who are perhaps that, that you include in your first statement, those are covered by Medicaid expansion. And Medicaid Medicaid will change under the Trump administration. Will that be a block grant? Will that be a per capita cap coming back to the states? But here's the key. The federal government simply cannot do everything that it has tasked itself with doing. We need help from our state partners. We need help from our governors. There needs to be a role for the state government in taking care of people who are on Medicaid. I would vote for a block grant or a per capita cap to bring that back to state control. We want our state partners to be involved in this. To make sure I'm clear, what happens to the people who are insured by the ACA who are getting subsidies? What, what happens to those people will, once this thing is, is taken apart? Well, yeah, there will be a transition period and what it will look like the other side of that transition period, whether it is a tax credit, whether it is a... Uh, I, I don't think you will see a continuation of the subsidies, but will there be help to individuals who cannot afford insurance? Yeah. Yeah, there likely will be. I can't tell you the, the size and structure of that today because clearly that is something that's yet to be determined. But the, you know, look at what the, the headline was even just the late last week, the, uh, $10 billion more in subsidy payments in this calendar year alone that are going to be required into the Affordable Care Act. It's a program that's unsustainable. And then the other side is people actually have health insurance that's not usable. The deductibles are so high, the premiums are so high. Yeah, you may be getting some premium support on a on a subsidy, but you still got what twenty five hundred, thirty five hundred dollar deductible. You get a kidney stone in the middle of the night. You're still getting a big bill. I've had a few of those. Congressman Rex Tillerson lives in your district with Renda yes. in, in Denton County in Bartonville. Bartonville, yes. Sir. Now, as as Secretary of State, would he really represent the USA, or would he represent Exxon Mobil and the Trump Organization? He's been in business his whole career. Well. <clears throat> He has been in business his whole career. Well, and, and look, he's worked his way up from the ranks. It's not like he started in the in the corner office on the top floor of the Exxon building. I mean, he worked on the pipelines. He worked on the old drilling platforms. I'll never forget the, the Deepwater Horizon was going on down in the Gulf of Mexico. The Democrats called all the uh, energy company executives into our committee. I just asked the question when it finally got to me, uh, have any of you worked on one of these platforms? Rex Tillerson was the only hand that went up.
I mean, here is someone who has been through the entire process. And I did ask him, if, is, it, is it sometimes tough to control a well? And he said, you bet. You've got to be on top of these things or someone's going to get hurt. He is someone who knows that business inside and out. He knows the world. I mean, Exxon is a far flung. It may, be, it may be located. He may live in Denton County. It may be located in Irving, Texas. But it's all over the world. And there are outposts of that energy company um, in, I don't know how many countries but many around the world so he's got that world experience and all you know this is important to me the state department has 30,000 employees that's a pretty big bureaucracy to have to manage Exxon has 70,000 employees he is someone who is used to managing a large group of people hey, how long have you known him and how comfortable are you was he your first pick for secretary of state he wasn't on anyone's radar screen if, if you will recall but how refreshing is it to have someone so elected for this position who's not one of the usual parade of political recycles. I mean, this was great on the part of the president-elect to, to, to say who is perhaps the best person for the job. He did some interviews. The name was recommended to him by, I think, James Baker and Condoleezza Rice, uh, Bill Gates. I, I'm sorry, Bob, Secretary, former Secretary Bob Gates made pretty, a recommendation. Pretty good recommendation. Pretty good recommendation. 30 seconds left here. Let me ask about one of the usual suspects, Rick Perry. He couldn't remember the Energy Department. Now he is likely going to head it up. Is he really the right pick, Congressman? Well, yes, and he will be good. This certainly will be good for Texas, and we are we are an energy-producing state, and certainly Governor Perry understands that, and he understands how important the industry is for Texas. You know, I've heard the criticism that, well, uh, Dr. Chu was a Nobel right. scientist, and Ernest Moniz is a, a top-grade nuclear physicist, but look, these are the individuals who brought us Solyndra and the Iran deal. I think Rick Perry will, uh, I think he'll do a great job.